Hey guys, Teresa here from Sippy Couture. We're gonna do this Gypsy Mermaid Tumblr Tay. We're jumping right in so we don't waste any time because I know my videos are a little lengthy. So what I have is a 12 by 12 card stock. I've adjusted the sizes for you guys so I'll tell you what they are, that way you don't have this bottom row kind of cut off. Uh, the sizes are 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And honestly, I'm so sorry, I don't remember the Cricut setting that I used for this. It may have been cardstock, uh, but I didn't do it, but my blade's old, so it's probably why it didn't give me too clean of a cut. So a few of them did kind of, you see where it, you know, tore off a little, did get stuck. But what I did was I just had my little X-Acto knife and I ran through the pieces that I didn't like and I just kind of trimmed them up with it. So no big deal there. What I'm doing now is I, um, I learned this little trick from Rachel over at Miss Nola, <laughs> Mr. Nola's Glitter. Um, just curve them around your finger a little and you'll help it adhere to the cup more since it is a curved surface that we're going to use. Um, you know, it kind of helps it lay a little flatter. So this is what we're doing. I use navy cardstock. Uh, what I'm going to do is for some of the scales, I'm gonna brush on some micas with it and they're kind of holographic micas and they show up better under a dark surface. I didn't wanna do black cause I didn't like the way black looked with the mermaid theme. So I went with navy. Uh, obviously you can use whatever color you want for these. It doesn't quite matter um, for the cardstock. I do like using cardstock because it's thicker. I've seen other people do this with vinyl. There's a few cool hacks that are super, super easy with vinyl. You can definitely do it that way. But like I said, I just like the, um, the thickness that cardstock has to it. So we're gonna put this right on. I put a little on my cup and I'm putting a little on, oop, just got my hand. I'm putting a little on the back of the cardstock. That way I can line them up, make sure they all go together pretty nicely. I need to get one of those cup cradles. I think I said that, I think I say that every time and I don't do it. So someone remind me. All right, we're starting at the bottom. For mermaid scales, you want them to overlap, but you want them to overlap at the top. The thing we do wanna be careful with this is that since we're using Mod Podge, um, this, the cardstock, it will, I need a cup thing, man. Um, it will want to kind of peel off the cardstock, you know, like you'll want to break apart from the glue and touching it too much. So get it down. And if you have glue on your fingers, try not to touch it all that much. Um, try to bring you guys closer. There we go. That might work. All right. So we're going to lay those down. We're going in a straight line and we're just lining up edge to edge. This is going to be covered with glitters. Uh, and there's so many fun little layers to this. Uh, so it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but this bottom part is going to have some glitters to it, uh, power wash, what else? Micas, <laughs> a lot. So we have that down and now we're going to put one in the middle. So we're going to build it upwards. Can you see that? We're going to build it up. We're not going to go all the way to the top on this. The tumbler that I'm using is a four in one can cooler from Hog. The thing that I absolutely love with this <laughs> is that it is perfect for cruise ships. That little drink of the day that you get, um, 16 ounces, figured that out last time. I wanted to get a beach, you know, like a cruise tumbler done for myself. And I couldn't figure out what I wanted. I didn't want to go the normal beach route. And someone did a tumbler very similar to this without the glitter. And I absolutely fell in love. To the point where if I knew who it was, I was just gonna order from them, but I searched and I couldn't find it. Like I remembered it, but I couldn't find out, couldn't figure out who it was, so we did our own. So we're gonna go through here, but we're gonna kind of break down each row that we're doing. We're gonna, you know, we did four, three, two, one, and then we're gonna switch it and go in a different section. And I don't know if I said this yet, but the idea that I got from this is that I saw the gypsy leopards and I love that. But when I saw it, I was like, man, that would be so cool if it was like scales instead of leopard and if it was random. And I don't know, that idea really, really stuck with me for a minute. So we went for it and I love it and I'm very, very happy. All right, so what I'll do is I'm gonna break off to the side. You know how whenever you do the, um, what's it called, the B ones? you kind of put throughout your cup like a few random honeycomb designs and it really makes it. It's kind of what we're doing here. 
We're gonna have it break off a few different ways, not have it be a set pattern to it. I love navy blue. I absolutely love this color. And the way that it plays off the glitter, oh my goodness. It's cool, like it gives it a little depth to it. And that's definitely why I didn't wanna go, okay, so you see how this is like, I like the way this ends. Let me give it one more. Let me give it one more and see what happens, I think. Yeah. So one side kind of ends this side carries on a little, the other side ends a little too abrupt. So we're gonna figure out what we wanna do here. I'm gonna build it up one more right here and then maybe a few this way. And like I said, we're gonna be putting, let me put this right here, we're gonna be putting micas over this tack it method so it's okay you know if you get your stuff through there the the cool thing about it is that it ends up giving it a bit more detail i had one that i did and you could see like just the mess of it <laughs> and i say mess because y'all it was a mess like from where my fingers were touching the um, cardstock it was pulling up and it looked <laughs> it looked rough okay i don't want it to be too I don't want it to look like a pyramid or a Christmas tree, so I'm gonna go one more right here. Oh, it's a flat one from the bottom, we'll ditch that. Okay, there we go. Let's put that there so it isn't so like Christmas tree looking. All right, and then I wanna go, I wanna go a big piece right here. I wanna go like a very healthy piece right here because it kind of wraps around, like the way that it is right there, it wraps around a bit. So I wanna go a healthy piece right here and then I'll do a few here and then offset that with a few down here. And I think that will be maybe close to what I did last time, I honestly don't know. And we're gonna start from the bottom again. Let's see if I want a few there, let's go here. We're just doing the glue right now to get it to really stick to the cup. We're gonna do maybe two coats, or two, ooh, ooh, two good coats of it over that to really help it just soak in and lay flat. And I'm intentionally doing this over a white base instead of a darker color because what I'm doing after we get the micas and some of the um, this really, really fine glitter on a few scales is that we're gonna go through and take, uh, what color did I pull? Passion Purple and a teal aqua and an aqua alcohol ink. And we're gonna um, dab it all over the cup. Oh, you know what? I should have dropped it down more, huh? Well, that's all right. We'll play that off later. So we're gonna put the alcohol, dab that all over the cup. The glitters that we're gonna be using, um, they all change different colors. And I feel like with those, the more colors you have under it, the cooler it just looks because it gives it, you know, a bit more, um, it changes it even more. And the colors don't look so consistent. If you have some of these down, this is the part that I definitely would say is that when we're putting these right here, these scales, put more than you think you want because you can always cover it with glitter. Um, you can kind of edit your design as you go. It's easier at this point to have too many scales down and decide to cover some than be like, oh man, I wish I would have put one there because the point of the glitter, like our goal is to have it kind of roughly laying over all the scales. Um, you know, as if the scales are hiding, I guess you can say. And it's, you can't really add it. It won't be all that great to add it over glitter later if you change your mind. So it's best right now to put too many and you can cover up the pieces you don't like, keep the ones you do like. And uh, it ends up looking pretty cool. 
Like I said, I want this to be a pretty healthy piece right here. On my original design, there's a few that I realized after a minute that I didn't leave complete navy blue and I really wish I would have because it just looked so cool under epoxy. And like I said, the thing to remember is that for the scales, you know, the mermaid scales have to overlap. So if you're deciding that you want to jump sideways, kind of like I just did, you got to go from the bottom. If you wanted to do the same thing, but do a dragon design, then all you would have to do is um, resize your scales longer than they are wide. Oh, I just painted the wrong side of that one. I want to do this. Let's skip this pot right there. Oh, I need a thingy, a cradle thing. I like the way these scales look when they kind of disappear into the power wash that we're going to be doing towards the top so i'm going to bring this higher at the top and i'm definitely not taking credit for the tan and tipsy saying <laughs> on top of these scales in the power wash because the girl the tumbler that i saw like that oh it was so cute she didn't have the glitter though it was just the scales and it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I'm not a mermaid person. <laughs> I love the beach, I love the water, I love summer. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm a mermaid person. But, oh, I fell in love with her cup. Like, it could not have been any more perfect. Okay. And I probably should have, hindsight, I would have built this down more and had it come up. That way this isn't so rough like that, but I'll do a few, I'll do a few going that way um, to kind of make up for it just ending. And like I said, if I don't like it, we'll cover it. All right, so. Do just a few right here. Make sure they're straight, because that one wasn't. Definite props to the girl that did this design that I fell in love with, because she did the whole cup in scales. And I thought it was so cute. Oh my gosh, it was so, so cute. But with a curved cup, I do not have the time or patience to sit there and try to figure out my sizes. <laughs> Cause you gotta make them like a little wider on the top. That way by the time they narrow down, they all still fit right. And as much as I loved it, uh, not me. That is not for me. I'm surprised I didn't even have the patience for this. All right, so I think I'm gonna go Right here. Yeah. Oh. And that will trim off on the one of the next steps. Alright, so I have this kind of do I want one more right there? Yeah. I must be the queen of like I'm done. Oh wait, no, I'm not done. Because I do that a ton. Alright. And then, let's see. We have a good patch right there. Oh, I hate the way that just ends. I'm definitely going to have to 
do a bit of glitter to figure that out. I don't like that. All right, and then we'll do like a patch. What am I doing? We need something here. Let's see, let's just start putting them and see what happens. I look at some people's tutorials and they have all their designs worked out ahead of time and they're so good. They know exactly what they're doing. And then I get my stuff together. I'm like, oh, I forgot that on the other side of the room or oh, maybe I should have <laughs> practiced this one first. Oh, well. I feel like I don't want a ton right here and I definitely don't want it to like start and end in the same spot. We'll do a little patch going up. All right, let's see. Move those so I don't start gluing them together on the table. Sorry, got quiet, I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out. Cause I don't want it to end perfect. I don't want it to end in a straight line. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, where am I gonna put, cause every once in a while I'll paint one gold. And I definitely want it to be showing. I want to be able to see a gold one from each side, and I don't want the gold ones to be with anything. I'm just going to go a few up right here. Because I think what will happen is that if I put them too close on either side, it, you'll be able to tell like it was added on and it won't flow with that pattern, which isn't a big deal because like I said, it will be broken up with um, with glitter, but I think that would still bug me. Okay, we have this down and what we're going to do now, put one right here and see if I decide to keep it later. So what we'll do now is we're gonna take our Mod Podge and we're gonna really coat the hell out of this stuff. Like we want this stuff to be glued down really, really good. So we're gonna get it in all the sections, right? So put it down, wipe it in, go sideways, like really make sure that glue is in there. And then we're gonna let this set aside and dry. That next step, I'm not sure if I said it, probably did, sorry if I'm repeating myself, is to pick out the scales that we want to be um to have our micas on and we're going to put that on there and we want to make sure this glue is dry we're doing that with tacket we don't want all of these scales to be covered we just want like we definitely want a few to be left navy blue at least i want a few you don't have to i want a few to be left navy blue so i want to make sure all of these are down the glue is really really dry that way that mica is only sticking to the ones that i want And y'all, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my excitement. Tomorrow is Mr. Nola's Glitters Retreat. Oh my goodness. Um, if you're not in their group, y'all, you gotta go. You gotta go check out the Nolas. They are so, so sweet. Um, they just want everybody 
to be good at what they do. It's, uh, they're, I do love them. I seriously love them. I haven't met them in person yet. I will tomorrow and this weekend because I get to spend time with everyone and meet so many people. I'm excited. So I'm going to get some of this done, get to that. And I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm so, so nervous. Like I do this stuff in my room all the time. It's fine. I'm in the back, like, you know, by myself back here. I can do this. But like, oh, it's just me. Just me in this back room talking to myself. When it came up, this is something that's so awesome. When it came up, I told my husband, I told my boys, and I was more leaning towards not going just because I'm fairly shy. <laughs> and my boys were like, Mom, you have to do it. Like, stop it. You have to do it. Which is so cool because I push them. I push them so hard to be, to be as great as they can, to be great, to step out and do something. And for them to be like, you have to do this, stop. Um, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to get that in return. All right, so we glued these down pretty good. We're gonna let this sit um, and dry all the way, like all the way. I'll probably leave it for a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I'll double check it. Um, but I want it to dry all the way. Then I am gonna do another coat. I wanna be sure these little suckers don't go anywhere. Um, I'll do another coat. I'll let that completely dry. And then we'll start with our tacket and micas. And that part's so cool. So see you guys and well, yeah, I'll see you in 20, <laughs> right now. I'll see you right now. We're gonna get into the tacket with the micas now. Um, I have tacket over and over. And I just put a little bit onto just a scrap little backing of vinyl to make my life a little easier. The colors that I have is this blue. I have a turquoise and a violet. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to use. I'll see how it looks whenever it touches, um, you know, when it starts going against the navy and I might change that or grab a few other colors. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just brushing the tacket onto the scales. I want to make sure I'm getting inside these little cracks right there. That way it's sticking to everything, you know, every little bit. There, like I said, there's a few of these that will leave navy blue and all we'll have to do for that part is to take this, uh, I have baby wipes, is to take the baby wipes and go through and wipe up the micas that covered some of these scales. It's a little difficult to do it the other way and try to avoid scales with tacket, um, I mean, with the micas, that stuff gets everywhere. Uh, so it, this will make it easier. One of the things I did want to tell you guys is that whenever you're putting your scales down with Mod Podge, Mod Podge does tend to dry pretty quick. So you want to be sure that you get this, um, once you put your scale down, you're kind of committed to where it is. If you have a lot of Mod Podge on there, you will have a minute to go through and move your scale. I mean, not even a minute. You'll have seconds <laughs> to go through and move your scale and reposition it. But for the most part, if you put it down, um, you're kind of committed to that spot. The other thing is when you're laying your scales, if you want your target area to be right here, start lower. Kind of like how I messed this part up and I did a straight line. I don't want that straight line. I would have rather do something else. We'll cover it with glitter, not even a big deal. But I would have liked it to kind of um, go like go more into that section. And it would have looked better if there was like a few here and that was the focal point. It wouldn't look so like end of the road type. Um, so just be mindful of that. Start lower that way by the time you add your focal point, it's higher. One of the things with this tacket um, and putting this down on these scales, I'm not gonna do this one, I want this one gold, so we're not even gonna worry about that. Oh, putting this tacket on the scales, brush in a downward motion. If you go sideways, there's a chance that some of your micas will pick up the um, those brush strokes that are going sideways. And it, not that it's horrible, it's just, um, it makes more sense for the design to kind of work downwards. You know, if you see in any streaks and details. I feel like if it were to go sideways, it would look like the mermaid got in a fight or something. <laughs> Where downward kind of makes a little more sense with the scale, um, kind of a scaly pattern. This one is definitely not going to be gold, so we'll, we'll change the color of this one and then we'll decide later if we want to keep it. So we're just brushing this tacket on here. Besides making sure it gets into these little grooves, we're not doing anything special. We're just slapping it on.
for the scales that are going to get this gold glitter um, it doesn't even matter what color that base is we're not going to take our time to paint it a certain color and do anything fancy with that we'll just put the glitter over the micas And then for those of you that maybe haven't used Tacket, the glue, don't do those? No. <laughs> the, um, the glue dries tacky. That's the cool thing about this is that you have, uh, you can play with it a lot. Uh, as it dries, it stays tacky. And that's really what gets your uh, micas to adhere. Okay. Did I do these? Yes. These are done. We want that to dry. We'll give that a minute and we'll open up these. Now the fun part about these is that I don't put them in any certain pattern. I kind of like freely drop them everywhere and then I kind of mix them in. Oh, I don't have my bigger brush. Let me get that real quick. Sorry guys, told you what happened. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right, so what we'll do, we had one other brush here. Here we go. Yes? No. Goodness. I put in my hair? No. Ah. Okay. Oh, my Lord. Here. It's so dumb. All right, so what we're gonna do, I should have grabbed a pink. Oh, well, that's okay. We're going to take this and we're going to just um, dust it over it, I guess. Definitely no certain way about this. Just let it fall. It's okay if it's too much. It's going to be a mess, but it's not even a big deal. Clean it up with baby wipes. this over it and I'm not going completely over it because we're gonna drop the blue and the white the same way and I really think that's what gives it that fun like almost unpredictable look to it come on probably could have used a better brush huh okay and then since it doesn't matter I'll go blue turquoise oh it's so pretty I love those blue family colors blue color family whatever I think I'm crazy probably should use a fluffier brush That's a lot. I was just thinking that you don't even need a lot of this stuff, and then look what I did. I dropped on like a mountain of it. Um, I'll just shake it off over the floor. Okay, and then we're gonna wipe that off on my pants, and then we'll go with this white one. What color did this white one say that it goes? blue I really like the blues and purples for this design all right I'm gonna touch that in a few places make sure it gets everywhere all right and then Two ways you can do this, rub it with your fingers. Or you can grab a little a brush and do it. And you see how it kind of picks up these colors? 
kind of blend them all in. Once the epoxy hits us and it changes the colors, it just looks so cool. And for some of these sections, like, so there's just a ton of blue right there. Just take your um, tacket, uh, dip it in your, take a paintbrush, dip it in your tacket, and kind of just put streaks in it, and then you can drop some more down. What I would do um, is that I wouldn't put my brush flat like that, because then you'll end up with big streaks. You want it kind of more on the side and do just random, you know, just thinner um, scratches. I don't know. See what I'm doing? Just do that if you want to. <laughs> if you don't want to, then don't do that. All right, so then let's go more with this purple right here. Is I think what we wanted. Probably should have let that dry a little more. I'm gonna rub that in. Use this little makeup brush that I got from a kit that came in. I don't know where this came from. I think it came with glitter that I bought, but I don't remember where. Okay, so got that into there. Make sure it gets like up into those grooves. And all you have to do is just take your little paintbrush and just jam it in there. Take what's on the table. how cool that looks it's gonna look so cool it's gonna look so different even under epoxy it's gonna look so different like these colors will really just give the scales a whole new look to it i love it all right so then what we'll do is we're going to start trying to plan out where we want these colors to fall let me close these up before i sneeze or something stupid that was this color this was blue purple and rub that on my leg <laughs> oh I'm a mess all right so we got these down and now we're going to start planning out how we want these colors to fall I really really love this design with a lot of navy blue so like I said before we could just take the baby wipe and go through and wipe it out we'll show you that in a minute and then we'll look at the gold and see what we want so I know I want this gold and what I want is to be able to see gold from every color, but not be like overwhelmingly um, painted with the scales. If you want to keep it like that, do it. Who, who cares? It doesn't even matter. Um, but I really like more of the navy blue. So I'm going to kind of just pick a few at a time and wipe away that color. We did the two layers of Mod Podge, so your... Um, your uh, what am I saying your cardstock is protected a bit you can have a little bit of leeway to wipe it off so go ahead um just make sure you have and I'm sorry I didn't video that it wasn't anything special like I just brushed more Mod Podge on no big deal so just wipe away what you want and hopefully that hopefully my colors are my camera's right where you can see it sorry I should have just left that alone sorry guys all right so then we're gonna knock off we're gonna get this one out of there Oh, and I guess we're doing that one too since I touched it, huh? I wonder if, what if we do little scratches of it? Let's see. Let's just take a little off. All right, we're going to leave that and see what happens. And then this is going to be gold. Let me, let me go another navy right here. And I guess we'll scratch this one up since I just touched it. <laughs> I'll cover up that mistake by taking some more off. Make sure it pulls down though. That's the only thing is that if you're going to scratch it up, make sure it scratches down off of that scale. That way it doesn't look like it's just in the middle. You know, it kind of 
at least it makes sense a little. Scratch it up more into that one. All right, and then let's see, where are we at? Let's make sure that goes up. Take a little chunk off this piece. And then we need another one. Let's go here. We'll go here and so that it's not so um, randomly scratchy, we'll scratch up this one. And then just make sure you're really like getting it around off that piece. Like take your time and clean off that whole scale. And then this one we're gonna scratch up. I really like the way that looks. All right, and then we're gonna do the bottom. This is gonna have gold glitter. It will have the colored glitter through and this will have gold glitter that comes up. So let's see if we can give ourselves a good navy that might peek through that glitter down there. Because I think the contrast of that navy and gold will be gorgeous. So let's take this one out. And then I might go, let's jump to this one. And since we scratched up some at the top, we'll run through and scratch off a little this way. You can kind of see the color. If you want to see what color this is going to be, once it's wet a little, you can, like, it brings out the colors more. It's crazy that navy blue. I think that um, this white one that we use, that's what dropped the gold on there. Like some of it looks gold. All right, so I'm gonna scratch up a few right here. And then we'll take off, what do we think? Take off these. Yeah, I'll take off those because having the navy right there in that big chunk, I don't want it to be too navy on the bottom. So we'll take off this group right here. I know this seems like unnecessary work probably, but it's just easier than, you know, trying not to get, trying to get your colors to smooth out. All right, and then let's go. I'm going navy on this one and this one. The other option would have been to just be a little more careful with um, putting down that tacket, but that's nothing we can't solve, so it's easy enough. All right, get that one cleared off. And actually, you know what? I was gonna drop alcohol inks um, I was going to drop alcohol inks on there, but I'm not going to. I think I might just, let me see real quick. Will this stick? Whoops. Oh, look, that saves me from having to do that step. All right. So I had the alcohol ink pulled, and I was just going to give it a really, really rough base. Um... That way the glitter isn't going over white. 
Uh, I feel like I like the way the colors will change more when it's over a multicolored base. So I was gonna go ahead and go um, with some alcohol to just kind of blotch that up a little. But since this paint is, um, the white paint is taking some of the color on that, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Save myself a step. And I'm not gonna use white. We're gonna do the purple and we're gonna do that blue. Let's see how that goes. So, oh, I like that better. And all we're doing is just breaking up the color, breaking up so it's not a white background, so it doesn't matter where you put this, just grab some and go. make such a mess. Okay. Put the lid back on that since we jumped a step. Now it will now we can continue. Continue on. Now we can kind of go through and get some of those back to navy because with putting that um that down just now we definitely got the powder back on some of these. So clean those up real quick. And this is still where you're not set. The ones you're wiping off right now, you're not set to that. So if you decide you want your glitter to cross over that and really take that um, that free gypsy flow and look, cover it up again. Doesn't even matter. Okay. That one brighter. hope I'm in the camera man I always do that to you guys I'm so sorry all right and then okay so this one's gonna be gold that's gonna be gold down there so it's kind of stupid to make that gold so we'll take no oh, no we'll get that down and then we'll see do think I want this one gold. I feel like it's hard sometimes to envision something. Like I don't start seeing it come together until I start um, putting it together. Sounds really weird to say, but hopefully you get it. All right, let's clean off this one down here. It's a good thing about using Mod Podge. If I would have went over with a spray paint and if I would have um, spray painted this, I wouldn't be able to, well, maybe I would be. I'm gonna have to check that out. I wonder if I would have sprayed this with spray paint, with like a clear spray paint. I wonder if that spray paint would make the paper bleed. I think that would be my only worry. Is that that navy? I guess if I did light coats, it wouldn't, right? I'll have to try that. And then I wonder how hard it would be to wipe off the glue over spray paint. I'll have to try that. I wonder if it would be any easier. I want a big spot of navy right here. When I do the decal, I'm gonna put a really pretty gold decal over this. So I want that navy and gold contrast again. So let's get a few of them out of there. And I guess I'll be careful because depending on how my glitter falls, Maybe I will change my mind and not put a decal on this side. 
Or I'm like, this girl really doesn't know what she's doing. Like, she kind of just goes. She changes her mind a hundred times. She's not confident at all. And I've made this cup a few times and it's come out great every time. And I just love it, so. And it's hard to mess up. That's the other part of it, is that no one really knows what you have in mind. So if you do something that you would consider a mess up, no one actually knows you messed up. All right, I'm gonna, I'm scratching this up. Kind of like I did the other side, just because I had a few scratched up and I feel like if I have these like perfectly, um, you know, perfectly set with color, it won't match the other side of it. I really like the way that it looks scratchy. It also, it gives it that, well, let's take that one off. I'm just gonna go away. Okay. And then, can you see how it's like darker here? I want it to drop somewhere. That's gonna be gold. And that's gonna be navy. And I don't want it to be like too close to the other navy. So let's, and I don't want it to be even with it either. So let's drop right here. It kind of has like that patina. Like a patina mermaid, aged mermaid. <laughs> it's so weird. All right, let's scratch up a few of these so they blend in. will be covered a lot like I said by that glitter that we'll just throw here and by a power wash so we don't really need to focus there a ton now I want to make sure I have navy everywhere I want to see it I have two navy there I'm gonna do this one navy because I have it I don't have anything on this side right here navy we're gonna go this one higher and that will work I'm short so I keep my seat low so my feet can actually touch the ground <laughs> and this time I'm like sitting on see this is where I wish that if I had one right here it would be cool to have that navy but I don't so well and you know what, let's do this one navy too and then we're going to go in with gold now for the gold I think I only want like Four of them are so around the cup to be gold. So we'll see how it goes. I want to be able to see a gold from every single side. From every angle you see the cup, I want to see one. Um, one gold scale. All right, so I have Goddess from Peachy Olive Glitter. Uh, it's like the little sister to Athena. So, so pretty. And I have a paintbrush, this one that I'm using here. It is, um, I'm not to show this to you. It's flat, it's small, and it's gonna get into the crevices. So do that. We'll do a little Mod Podge and keep it on here. This is a point where it's okay if you touch it on the cup. Um, you can really clean up around it if you have to. And we're gonna be dropping glitters around that. So it's not that big of a deal, but Definitely make sure you get the full scale. Okay. That's on there. We're going to go straight on because this Mod Podge likes to dry pretty quick. Okay, straight on with that. And then we're going to tap. Look how pretty that is. We're going to tap this off. And then I have this little feathered paintbrush we can go through and clean around it. Let it dry a bit before we go at it too much with that. I need a um, piece of parchment paper. Will this work? No. Will this work? Yes. All right, just clear contact paper. Um, I need to kind of press down. 
I may give that another coat. I'm going to see how it looks in a little bit. I probably will. See, this is where I would like for that to be gold underneath to really help that gold pop, but no big deal. Okay, so now I want a gold from each side of the cup, so let's do this one. This is where I really want to be careful and get just inside that space. Close around there. Mod Podge is so easy to clean up. All you really need is a baby wipe and you could just wipe up whatever you don't want. I wish I had something thinner than this. I love this glitter, but I almost need something thinner than Goddess for this. It comes, still comes out great, but just to really have it hidden in there would be cool. All right, so we got two right there. I will want, I want to leave that navy. And I don't want to go gold with that because it's right next door. I don't want that. Let's go here. Probably should have used a little container to put this Mod Podge in. That way I'm not like putting my um, blue, you see it? <laughs> my uh, colored epoxy, I mean colored Mod Podge back in there. I'm usually pretty careful with that stuff. Like if I have an empty um little plastic cup like this like i'm talking about i would just like put a drop in the bottom of that like literally on the bottom of that and dip from there but i didn't i bet you that's why i brought it over here okay Ooh, starting to come together i know it looks like a hot mess it's starting to come together please just trust me all right so this is going to have gold going up so i don't want any more gold right there at all like zero this top part is not going to have gold. Um, it is going to have power wash over the gold at the bottom and only power wash on the top. So we're not going to go, um, we're not going to leave it out. Let's go this top one. This might be one of the only times I've ever not base painted a colored glitter you know glitter the color as far as the gold i always always base paint in the same color that i'm going to glitter that way it has um how do i say this it has like a bit more substance like a bit more depth like it isn't just it doesn't look like a shallow color like you see it and it's like a rich rich purple or you know like a really flashy gold because it's coming off of that color already and the other thing I do is like I'll paint my cup white and then I will paint it um and then I'll paint it gold because I feel like if you put gold over silver you're kind of starting with a dark colored base where I really like for it to be I really want it to stand out all right so we have down up down up let's go this is gonna have gold at the bottom so I don't want to go crazy but let's see how this will look let's just try it we'll go here I'm not touching that navy one. I want that navy. Okay. Why do I keep closing that? annoying sometimes all right 
knock that off and then let's go really want that to stay navy man i don't want to do that all right let's go this one let's go this one and then i think i know which one i want to go this one i say this one maybe oh man i like the way it's scratchy though ah too close. Let's go that way. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like to point out that I'm getting better with not saying bad words. I haven't said any this time. I don't think I've said any this time. Let me phrase that. <laughs> I'm getting better. In front of my boys the other day. I um I feel like bad words aren't quite bad words. Like I know it's bad, I know people look at them as bad words, so they need to be treated like bad words when you're out in public, but I feel like it's just another form of expression. You know, it's not like it's this big cursed word as though it is a curse word um so i tend to just speak in front of my boys i have four boys and the other day i think i said gosh or something they were like what did you say it was so like what the hell are you talking oh see look there we go they're like what are you saying right now who says gosh you don't say gosh i'm trying all right so we're gonna dust this away to see where we're looking just double check what we look like once we get this on here, we're gonna go through and really try to clean up all these loose flakes of glitter. And then we'll take it outside, we'll seal it with clear sealer and really, really get them away, get them gone. It won't be the end of the world if it's on there, but for the pieces that are navy, I really want them to stay bright, pretty navy. The good thing about this paintbrush is that I forgot to clean it one time, so on the ends, there's bits of dried up Mod Podge that are really good, <laughs> that are really good at helping me like scrape off some of those pieces. So there's a plus side. Am I feeling bad about not cleaning a paintbrush? You can use the pokey bits of them. Look how cool that is. So I must not have wiped it all the way and it's like just a few streaks of it. <gasps> Am I gonna have to do that? Oh man, I'm not gonna have to do that. Dang it, that looks so cool. Oh, can you see that? Look how it, right this, this one. See how it's like. Oh, that's cool looking. Am I gonna have to do that now? I might have to. Not have to, I might want to because now it's like, shoot man, it's a little on that one. Is that the only one with it? Is it gonna look out of place? Dang it, man. God, it looks so cool. All right, well, I'll figure that out in a minute. All right, and there was a spot that I needed another one. So I have one I can see from there. This is gonna have gold going up. And I know this is a bit without gold, but that's okay, because I'll have the gold going up and I wanna see that navy, so that's fine. I like that at the top, that's gonna be cool. That's gonna look really cool. So then let's wipe away this. And I'm really sorry again for not having this whole design worked out ahead of time. Um, I know what I made last time and I don't know why I didn't at least pull up a picture to follow or follow my own directions. There needs something over here. Man, I wish this was alive so I could be like, so I'm gonna stop, bing, bing, bing. Let's go. I wonder if it would be too much to do this one and that one. I feel like it would be because it's like right next to each other. I don't want to go that high and have it that much of a gap. Now what if I do this one? Oh man, but this is going to stick to that in a cool way, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so I'm not doing that one.
Y'all are probably like, well, this is why your tutorials take too long, because you don't have your stuff set ahead of time. Oh, well, we'll just credit it to working out designs as we go. Talking through it and letting y'all know that I don't know what the hell I'm doing either. Damn it. Dang it. Sorry. <laughs> Thought I was doing good. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Wipe that off. I just put that Mod Podge down, so I'm going to be careful where I'm wiping just enough to kind of see what that one looks like. I don't want to um, kind of wipe into it. I think that's good because whenever I do my decal, if I do my decal right here, it's going to be gold. <gasps> I should have thought about that. Ah, It's going to be gold. And I don't want it to take up. Maybe I'll do it. I don't know where I'm going to do it. No, we're about that in a minute. Worry about that after the next batch of glitter is down. All right, so let's clean up. Well, let's close up this. You know what, where's, before I do that, here's that one that I laid down a minute ago to see. Let's put a little more in there. Hindsight, I shouldn't have laid that down. See what other spots more my edges aren't completely crisp. I don't really feel like this needs a second coat. If you see some areas where like your Mod Podge was thick and it soaked it up, then you can add a little more around that. But I don't quite feel like it needs a second coat. Like right there, like there's a spot where it wasn't too thick. like blotchy-ish. Yes. <laughs> My husband walks in with a double thumbs up. He knows that I am trying so, so hard, even though I feel like a dum-dum. All right, I kind of like the way those are. I'm not gonna um, fill those in anymore. Let's see. All right, so if I can show I'm doing this, I have that down and I'm just gonna tap it and let some of that fall off. That way when I go wipe it, I'm not wiping off any glitter that's not already stuck there, if that makes any sense. Hmm, don't let that dry. I gotta stop touching that. Leave it alone. Okay, when this one dries, I'm gonna give this one another coat because since I did a few spots, it's blotchy. I shouldn't have went for the next coat. Oh well. All right, move some of this off. We're gonna let this sit, let this Mod Podge and the glitter really set and adhere to the cup. Um, we'll check it in maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, won't be 20 minutes for you guys because as I figured out a minute ago it's um it's not 20 minutes it's pretty quick so we're gonna let this sit and then we will come by and really scrape through some of these and make sure that we have really crisp edges on these um on these scales that are gold because I want them to really really stand out so we'll come back and do that in a minute so the glitter that we want to keep is dry. We're going to go through and clean off the extra, oh, and touch that up. We're going to go through and clean off some of this extra glitter. I have this super dull um, razor that I use for everything in the world. And I'm just going to take that and scrape off some of the glitter that's stuck to it, maybe because of glue or whatever else. Now, when I get to the scales, I'm not going to use um, 
I'm not gonna use this as much because I don't wanna scratch up the scales. I'm just kind of loosening the glitter. So when I get there, I'll turn it over and I'll use kind of the back side of it just to go super, super close right along the edge. So like right here, I don't know if you can see there's a few pieces. I'm gonna turn it over and we're just like sharpening those lines. I'm barely even touching the bottom one. I'm more just like balancing it um, on the top of this one and kind of wiping it away. And after that loosens up, you can take your funky little paintbrush and just wipe it down. It's like you see that top right there where it's stuck. I don't want to scratch up this one. I'm just going to kind of loosen it up. If you kind of go a little too hard and you do scratch it up, then I would say intentionally scratch up more of it to play it off. No one's going to know. No one's going to know you made a little mistake. Just make it look intentional or consistent. Maybe not intentional, but consistent. I think that would be a little more accurate. See if like here, it's not so sharp right here because of this one piece. We're gonna wipe that away. Drop your paintbrush on the floor because it never ever works great unless half the stuff you use end up on the floor at some point. So drop the paintbrush on the floor. <laughs> and then this one, it kind of crossed up into this one a little more. So let's see if I can knock those pieces off without scratching i mean we're just talking like 12 pieces of glitter that are in the wrong spot goodness how many times am i going to drop that today down here As we're cleaning this, we don't want to go super, super rough and knock on top of that glitter that's laying down because we really don't want to wipe that away. We're just trying to clean it up a bit. And then this is the one that needs a little more. So let's just do that while we're here. With my paintbrush that's already sitting in my cup of water. Where am I at? Right here. Yeah. So this one I added it at some point, added more glitter at some point. Um, and you can see how it's like thick right there and kind of sparse right there. So we're just gonna go ahead and try to get around those edges that aren't perfect. This will have Dawn Power Wash over it. So it doesn't even have to be perfect. I just want it to look consistent. go the Nola retreat this weekend man I'm so excited we get access I'm gonna rub it in guys we get access to the glitters that they have there we get to go through and um and I don't know play with glitters and everything it's gonna be so much fun I think I'm gonna see if I can make an even thinner version of um goddess from their stuff because it would be nice if this was like even finer than that. I think it would have to match the consistency of um, Magnolia Opal. I don't know about Sultans. I think Sultans might be a little, I think Sultans might be thinner than Goddess, but thicker than Magnolia Opal. So I wonder if I can make it in that consistency. I have a few really, really good um, chunky glitter mixes that I put together of theirs um, and I use it as a good base and it just, oh, it's so pretty. So I'm really planning on bringing a few of the glitters that I've made from here and matching it as a batch. It would be if you had like, if you're familiar with Nola's glitters, it is um, Alibi, um, Sultans, I'm giving away my secrets y'all. <laughs> it's Alibi, Sultans, and then you take like a medium and, um, and a fine cut of the same color 
And when you mix those together, you get this really, really perfect chunky glitter mix that is just flawless. So I'm hoping um, if it doesn't break my bank, I can go this weekend and put together a few like really high flash um, glitter mixes because I burned through those colors just making, you know, other mixes. I have a Tiffany one that I did that's like a like a high flash Tiffany mix. Oh, like that Tiffany blue. Y'all, when I tell you, it's the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. It's so, so pretty. So I'm hoping I can ma uh, make a few of those. It would be similar to Nola's, um, oh, what collection is it? Oh, I'm thinking of it. I'll have to pull it. One of the collections that they most recently came out with, it's similar to that, but that collection has like um, almost diamond shaped, um, really holographic chunks to it that I just don't want in there. So it would be close to that, but without those holographic chunks. I'm Y'all, I'm excited. I'm excited. Can't wait. <laughs> Oh, I have issues and just ignore them. I'm excited. All right, so I think I have that cleaned off. I'm gonna take my alcohol wipe and just make sure some of these navy ones just stay navy. And what that basically is doing is wiping away some of the chunks of glitter that might be stuck to the glue on there. Um, it'll kind of loosen that up a little. What collection is that? I know the exact color. I could leave you guys here for a minute and go look, but I think that would have me losing track of what I'm trying to accomplish. Goodness, man, what is it? What is it? It's gonna bug me that I can't think of it now. I'm looking at the glitter in my head and I can't even think of it. Okay, so this is cleaned up. My lines are crisp. Everything is where I want it. Not gonna worry about that. I love this piece. Goodness, was I out of the camera again? I'm not gonna worry about that. I love this piece. I'm not gonna worry about that piece. I like it and we'll see how it looks under epoxy. So this is where we're at. We're gonna spray it with um, clear Rust-Oleum two times thick, triple thick, I don't know. Clear spray paint. We're gonna seal it with clear spray paint and then we're going to strategically place epoxy because that's always fun. <laughs> um, not completely tricky, not completely easy, but worth it. So we'll do that step next. So this is gonna be the most difficult part of this cup is that we're putting down our epoxy, um, but we are going to kind of strategically place it. <laughs> um, and it is as difficult as it sounds. You don't quite want it to get um, onto the scales because you don't want your glitter to really cover all of the scales. There's a few that they will cover, but um, I don't even know what part those will be yet. Um, we'll figure that out as we go. So I'm working this epoxy and I'm using quick set epoxy. Um, it's Mr. Nola's speed dry epoxy. The good thing with this is that since it's going to set up pretty fast on me, it's gonna um, not quite move the way that a normal epoxy would. It'll set up faster, it won't quite flow, and that's exactly what I needed to do. We wanna make sure we get into all these little cracks down here in between all the scales, but at the same time without getting on the scales. If you use, if you warm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to concentrate and explain this at the same time. If you warm up your epoxy before, like as you're mixing it to help mix it a little quicker, um, you might not want to do this, do that for this part. It's okay if your epoxy has bubbles in it. Glitter's going on top of this, so that's not a big deal. What you don't want is your epoxy to completely set up to where you can't quite smear it around. So don't worry about the bubbles guys like get bubbles in it it doesn't even matter whip the shit out of it sorry whip it up like crazy um and then just get it on your cup i was doing so good with my words i 
Ooh, this is setting up quick. I was trying to do two cups like this at once. And that is where I'm kind of getting in trouble with this setting. All right, so now that I have this, I know some of these I do want covered up. Like I want that glitter to, um, to go over it. So it isn't the end of the world. Make sure this gets around because I need it to go in there. I don't think I showed myself um, sealing this cup. I did take it outside before this step and I sprayed it with a clear Rust-Oleum two times sealer. I completely forgot to video that. I was kind of just in a mode going, so sorry about that. Um, but it's sealed. So this glitter right here, I won't have any issues with that moving. All right, getting close to those. Make sure it's in there. All right, and then I'm gonna let this go for a quick second, and then we'll drop the glitters on there. So I have that epoxy, oh, look, it's set up already. Goodness, man. All right, so let's not mess with that anymore. Um, some of these spots, the epoxy is traveling over the scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it intentional now. Like it comes up right there, so we'll give it, we're just gonna use our finger and dot it across a little. That way some of the, um, the glitter that we're gonna drop will stick to these scales, not a ton. And we're not doing, like we're not, if you can see, I'm just kind of tapping it along like, Kind of encouraging it to go that way since i didn't put epoxy on those scales it's not going to want to flow um, it'll only want to flow around if you do if you put the epoxy where it can help move so i have that down and we're going to start dropping some of these glitters all right i have um pretty good selection of glitters here i'm going to start with the ones i definitely know that uh how they're gonna lay on here. We have Blue Bayou from Mr. Nola's. I'm gonna put this, drop it on the side of the paper, like just on the paper, because it's a little darker, and I'm not quite sure how dark I wanna go, so I'm just gonna drop that through, and this will be my filler glitter. A lot of people like putting their chunkies down first and working thinner. The thing I don't like about that is that I like being able to see, um, I like being able to see some of the chunks. So I'm gonna use my filler glitter first. I'm gonna just drop it down in there, And not really in any certain um, spots, but I am kind of doing like a um, like a swirl type pattern. We have such little glitter that did carry over to some of these scales that if we don't want the glitter there after this is done, then we can just use our um, our knife or a blade or something and just pick it loose. All right, so that's all we're using a blue bayou. We're gonna switch to ducking, woo, to ducking gorgeous by Feather Bear. And we're gonna put like a tad. We're putting it right inside of uh, Blue Bayou. Still drop some of it over the scales. All the colors that we're using on here are color shift blues and greens. Some of these shift to purple and that is perfectly fine. Um, you don't have to use these colors either. You can use different ones. If I was doing this like a dragon scale, then instead of the blues, I would switch that out for um, for like the reddish greens. If you have anything from um, Backfist, it would be Backfist Mood Glitter or it would be Feather Bear's um, Oh, what's the name of it? Can't think of the name of it right now. Starts with an F. Fake news. All right. 
so we're gonna put this one on a little thicker this one is Calypso this is one that I just got in the other day I was so excited I was going through my list trying to think of what I could use for this color um, and when I saw this one like oh talk about no-brainer definitely want some of those to kind of stick to that besides wanting it completely covered in glitter for all these um, spots that do not have scales uh, there's no other reason like no other um, way I'm putting this on like no reason to it I don't know can't think of words right now. All right, so now I have the other side by Feather Bear. I'm kind of using my hands just to drop these somewhat close to the scales because I don't want to go all out and dump it. This, the cool thing about this glitter, the other side is that there's like little round bits in there. It's almost like having little bubbles in it. It's really pretty. And not to fill up every single space with this right now because we're going to still get a few more shades in there. All right, we have making groceries. This is from uh, Mr. Nola's glitter. We kind of use that to fill in some of these spots, dropping it more of where that blue was put just now. that down so this will fit and then I have Harry from um, from Mr. Nola's again and I'm putting that a little more generous because they have a bunch of colors in there that's going to shift a lot and that's going to be really pretty. It doesn't even matter which um, color it falls on top of. It's going to be really pretty. Is that better? Dang it. <laughs> I, um, I ordered a cup from another tumbler maker. And it's a rhinestone cup. I do not make rhinestone cups. I don't have the time or patience to make rhinestone cups as of right now. Um, but I don't think it's something I ever want to have the time or patience for. And when I tell you I'm excited to get this cup, ah, I'm excited. It's my new baseball mom cup. And it's like rhinestone and stitches. Oh, so excited. All right. I am trying to find a piece of parchment paper. Here we go. Now it's a piece of parchment paper. We're going to go through... Get it stuck to the cup. <laughs> oh, I'm a mess. I know I'm a mess. I'm trying not to be a mess. All right, we're gonna take a parchment paper. We're using it to lay down this chunky glitter. Um, I strongly, strongly suggest this step. If you don't do this, you're gonna have a fun little nightmare trying to get um, epoxy to cover your cup right. It is not gonna be fun, guys. So take a minute, get some parchment paper, go through your tumbler, and um, and really lay it down. There's a spot right there that didn't get epoxy. Let me get a glove. And I think I'm gonna pull, I have a cup I can take some epoxy off of. You know the really, really cool thing about um, Speed Dry that is so amazing is that with a lot of epoxies, Okay, do not, I do not recommend heating up your epoxy past the point of when you're working on it, but this is pretty cool. So on some epoxies, whenever um, it's on a cup and it's pretty much set, if you go and add heat to it, it'll get these weird little bubbles in it that are just funky. And um, Nola's epoxy does not do that. All 
All right, I have Lakeview that I pulled from um, Mr. Nola's Glitter, and I'm gonna use that to try to just fill in a few spots that I know are really close to that. And like I said, I don't like going on, like I don't like going over that big glitter with a fine epoxy because I don't, I wanna see that, the chunky glitter. I don't wanna see this fine stuff. But I don't think I have a choice, especially when it's that close. I right, wanna drop on a little more of Calypso. doing over there knock it off again get my paper make sure it's laid down and then what we'll do now is we're gonna let this spin for a bit after it spins for a while we'll get a blade or um something pokey get something pokey <laughs> i have um a winn-dixie knife part um what's it called a paring knife that is super super dull so i'm going to use that and i'm going to scrape off the pieces that i really wanted to be navy i'm going to make sure all that glitter is gone and i have perfect little mermaid scales i'm going to clean that off make sure you can really see that defined in that one and um and we'll have it just sitting there really pretty and perfect so we'll let this sit like i said this is speed dry so we're, we're gonna be able to work on this pretty quick I'll get back to it in maybe, um, maybe an hour. Two hours is a safe point where you can pull this and really mess with it. Two or three hours, yeah, let's say two or three hours. Uh, depending on weather and where you are and all that other good stuff and humidity. Um, that's about the point where you can really mess with it and sand it. If there was epoxy on it, you could sand it. Do not sand this next, do not. Um, we're gonna go and clean these up and then we'll put epoxy and we'll see where we are at that point. But um, two or three hours is a point where it's safe to really handle. I'm gonna give it a little less time than that and go through and clear this off. Then we'll take it outside, spray it, and do some more. 